I'm Bert Lundquist along with John Madden. Pat Summerall, who ordinarily occupies this spot, will be along a little later with a telecast of the men's singles finals at the U.S. Open Tennis Championship. This has been an interesting and sometimes tumultuous summer for both the Eagles and, and the Giants. Both teams have been bothered by continuing problems with holding out veterans. Both have had season-ending injuries to starters, and yet somehow both have had good preseasons. Philadelphia 3-1, and one, the Giants undefeated at 5-0. and oh. And yet I get a sense, John, that Marion Campbell is a little confused about this Philadelphia team. Well, you know, sometimes that stuff helps. As Marion Campbell said, he walks out on the field the first day at training camp, and he looks, and there's 11 guys that aren't there, and they finally spend a few days and they start talking about that the new owner and everyone says boy you got a lot of problems and he said after a week or two everyone said hey this is the hand that we're dealt let's play it and he said no, we started playing pretty well is the giant 5-0 and record a little deceiving i think uh you don't know i mean this is when it's all going to count you know when they start here today and I think that what the Giants uh, are trying to do is they finished last or 22nd rushing last year, and they would like to improve upon that. Their number one draft choice is a running back, George Adams. And, but I still think if they're going to win, if they're going to be a playoff team, it's going to be on the passing game in the arm of Phil Simms. We're set for the kickoff, and there is Marion Campbell, the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Philadelphia will kick off to the New York Giants and their head coach, Bill Parcells. Paul McFadden getting ready, Fred Wyatt the referee, and the deep man, the middle man of three as this giant crowd comes alive already is Phil McConkey. From the five. way to start the season. Offensively, Phil Sims off his best season ever. Joe Morris and USFL product Maurice Carthen starts for Rob Carpenter. Bobby Johnson and Lionel Manuel are the wide receivers. Up front, Brad Benson, Billy Art on the left side, Conrad Goody, that might be a soft spot at center. Chris Godfrey, Carl Nelson, and Mark Bavaro starts for the injured Zeke Moata tight end. First and ten, single running back behind Phil Sims. Play faking will throw on first down. Or he will run on first down. Defensively for Philadelphia, Tom Struthers, Ken Clark at nose guard. He may bother Goody today. Greg Brown, the pass rushing specialist at right end. The linebackers, here's where they might be hurting. Reggie Wilkes is back, so is Anthony Griggs. Mike Reichenbach starts for Jerry Robinson, and Gary Cobb is filling in for Joel Williams. He came from Detroit. And in the secondary, Roynell Young, back after being out most of last season. Herman Edwards, Ray Ellis, and perhaps the best free safety in the NFC, Wes Hopkins. Second down and six. Carthen. Close for the first down inside the Eagle 45-yard line. Didn't spend all his time blocking for Herschel Walker. Well, no, he didn't. That's the type of, of fullback he's known as, though, as, you know, a blocking type of guy, but also that straight-ahead guy. Not not like uh, Carpenter, who has those quick feet and moves right or left, but Carthon will tend to get an angle, point it one direction, and wrap it right in there. Third and one, and George Adams has joined the backfield, the number one draft choice from Kentucky. Carthon again. First and ten. has been bothered by a bruised knee. Marion Campbell told us he wouldn't make a decision until right at game time. Whether to start him, he's in there. And that'll be a fascinating matchup against Conrad Goody today. Well, and the most interesting guy in that matchup could very well be uh, Phil Sims. That was the thing he asked to practice yesterday. He says, Clark, going to play? We told him we thought so, and he said, oh, shucks. On first down. That was open. Lionel Manuel, first down for 22. thing you've always been able to do against these Eagle defensive backs. You watch Roynell Young. He's backing off. He's off. He gives a pretty good cushion. He's playing to the inside. And if he doesn't get some outside help out there from a linebacker underneath, Lionel Manuel or in the, and the Giants will do that all day to him. They'll do it all day. Second first down for the Giants after that long opening kickoff. No score. First series of the game. Joe Morris. 
Things get jammed up around the left side, and he's down at the 23-yard line. That's one of the interesting things, I think, Vern, about the Giants this year in their running game. As I said earlier, they were 22nd in the league last year, but they're going this year from a fullback running team to a halfback running. You know, they used to be a carpenter right, carpenter left, carpenter up the middle, and now they're going to try and get Joe Morris and George Adams right, left, and up the middle. See what kind of a day Phil Sims had a year ago. 409 yards. Seven. Wilkes coming. Sims on the rollout. Has a man open. Manual touchdown. Here, sells him on the out. He comes up, boom, right by him for the touchdown. Watch the effect here. Remember, he got him on the out. Now he comes up, watch, shows him the out there. Here comes Young, boom, here goes Manuel. Here's the kick by Hajisik. He's been bothered by a hamstring pull. Gets this one as far as the 11-yard line. Evan Cooper. Eagles have a new offensive lineup this year. They're going with a double tight end set. Ron Jaworski's back from a broken leg. Michael Haddix gets the start at the running back spot. Jackson and Greg Garrity open the wide receivers. John Spagnola and Vito Cab on the two tight ends. Up front, perhaps a weak part of this offense. Kevin Allen, the number one draft choice. Steve Kenny on the left side. Mark Denner the center. Ron Baker and Hunter Mitchell on the right side. Jaworski said last night he's at the best preseason camp of his 13 years of pro football. It cost him the final month of the season. That's tipped incomplete. Terry Carson had a shot at it after it had been tipped behind the line of scrimmage. The giant defense, and what a strong one it is. Up front, Curtis McGriff. Jerome Sally starts in place of Jim Burt today. He is out with an injury. Leonard Marshall at right side. Carl Banks, Gary Reasons, Harry Carson, and Lawrence Taylor. I say the strength of this team, but in the defensive secondary, they do miss Mark Haynes. Elvis Patterson gets his start, a free agent from a year ago. Perry Williams, Bill Courier, and Terry Kennard. And Mike Quick has joined the lineup after working out only five days with the Eagles last week. Second and ten. Gary Reasons makes the tackle. Mike Quick had his contract restructured after Norman Brayman said he would not renegotiate. They restructured the contract and finally reached agreement after an 18-hour negotiating session last Sunday. And Quick joined the camp on Monday, worked out five days. But Johnny really hasn't had time to be to be football tough yet. Well, that's what Mary Campbell was saying. So There's one thing to be running shape, but football shape is where you get walloped around. Third and nine, they've got three seconds to get the play snapped. Didn't make it, delay of game. Kind of a shaky start for the Eagles' new offense. Delay, number seven, third down. That'll make it third and 14, a swamp box looking on from the Eagles' sidelines. Well, this is their passing formation. The Eagles go to the to the shotgun on that on that deal. They get in three wide receivers, and they don't take a tight end out. They uh, like to keep Spagnola in there because as Jaworski said yesterday, heck, he's our best receiver. Although I don't see him in there now. Four man rush. They're coming. Leonard Marshall. The thing that you worry about, watch the bottom of the 
screen. Let Leonard Marsh there gets the sack. He's going against Kevin Allen, the rookie. And you always worry about that in your pass protection. You know, number one draft choice, Kevin Allen, will be a good player. But when he's playing that left tackle, that backside, it's awfully difficult. Michael Haran, second year with the Eagles. From the end zone, left footed kick, not that far. McConkey at the 47. Dropped it. 
course, the, the pressure's coming from this guy, Lawrence Taylor. He's lining up out here on the left side. He knows passing down. He beats the right tackle, Leonard Marshall, and he's there just as Jaworski's throwing the ball. Now, here's Fred Wyatt, the referee. Holding, number 74, decline, fourth down. That was the guy who was trying to block Taylor. Taylor say, came so quickly off that corner. The <clears throat> the only thing Marshall could get up with his right arm, tried to hook him. Sometimes it's understandable. I'll tell you, that guy, I don't know if Lawrence Taylor isn't the best player in this league. Michael Haran kicked one 44 yards, but had poor hang time just a moment ago from the shadow of the end zone. It was returned 37. McConkey waits at the 10. This will be a script kick, I would expect. That put it Mike Haran from Long Beach State. just missed. Touch back, it comes out to the 20. That's a mini threat from the Philadelphia Eagles, but they don't get anything out of it. It's still trail 14 zip. We've had first uh, Phil Sims first touchdown toss of the year to Lionel Manuel for one touchdown. Joe Morris goes 11 yards. The Giants are up over the Eagles 14 zip, and on their first two possessions, they've had great field position from their own 46 and the Philadelphia 11. Now they start 80 yards away. Joe Morris. And the Eagles finally find the key and are able to stop the play. Well, that's a, the new running game of the Giants is, is to try and, and, again, instead of getting that fullback off tackles, get that halfback, and that's one of the plays there. Of course, they scored the touchdown going off tackle with the halfback just a couple of uh, plays ago. 7.35 to go first quarter, 14 up in New York. Good protection. Speed burner right through the hands. Bobby Johnson, who erupted in this league a year ago in this first game, as a free agent from Kansas, can't hold on to that one. I tell you, that's the type of play, though, that even though Bobby Johnson dropped that, that proved a number of things. It proved, one, that they had good pass protection. They're going to give Phil Sims time. And then it told the Eagles, hey, you better watch out. We're going to go deep with some speed. So those things, even though they don't get you touchdowns, they get you a heck of a lot that you can use and work on later. Third down, eight. Bobby Johnson caught eight for 137 yards against the Eagles in the first game last year. From the shotgun. How about that for some agility? that for a near interception from Roy Nell Young. Roy Nell Young, there's a there's a flag on the play deep. It looks like they may have hit Bill Sims after he threw the ball. Maybe you're right. That pass was intended for George Adams. He's going to be the pass receiving guy. In fact, George Adams on pass. We have personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 98. First down. On pass on offense. Yeah, he's taking Zeke Mowat's spot. Yeah, I don't know about this thing, though, because once the quarterback starts to run, now he loses his protection. So now he's a runner. See, watch it. Now, now it's out here. Now he's a runner. Now they can go after him as long as they don't hit him. I don't know that that's a penalty. I don't think that you can that the guy can have that much protection when he's running around like that. I don't think that's a good call. Morris for two near the 40-yard line. Little Joe Morris became a starter at the midway point of the season a year ago. Which Wolfolk, who had had the spot, is now a member of the Houston Oilers. And folks in this area know about his career records at Syracuse, where he carved a niche for himself. Well, you know, you look at a guy like him, and he's not really a little guy. He's a short guy. He weighs about 195, 200 pounds, but that thing comes in a frame about five, six, or seven. Second and seven. We're going deep again. Lionel Manuel. That's 
that's the type of thing that I'm talking about there. You know, where they put manual down deep on this side. They already got manual down deep on this side for a touchdown. They put a Bobby Johnson down. You know, spread them out. Get them deep. Get that defense where they just can't can't dig in there and get in those trenches. Dig in there. Manual out of Pacific. And now we've got a third down and seven. for the Eagles. And the sack from Byron Darby as Philadelphia went to that 407 defense and it worked that time. That was the thing. We saw the seven defensive backs in there. No one was open. That was a problem. What the Eagles do here, you see those two inside guys, they're linebackers. Here they get a loop going out there. The stunt comes from the outside to get Sam. But no one was open. John Landetta. It didn't quite work. Landetta's first punt for the Giants after replacing the veteran and very popular veteran Dave Jennings. That is a 68-yard kick. He came into our hotel room while we were watching films of the Eagles yesterday and he asked you about drafting Ray Guy and you told him what about Ray Guy's hang time? Well about his hang time and also about his flexibility. Ray Guy when he used to punt he would get his foot all the way up back beyond his head and, and so I was going is that right? Holy moly that I said yeah it was normal. 5-7 hang time man that is the best I've ever had was 5-4. Michael Haddix you're talking about your guy, there's a late flag there, but we're talking about your guy, it's kind of like your kid, you always exaggerate anyway. Looks like Vito Cap might have gotten involved in some... No foul, unnecessary roughness, number 84. That is Vito Cap. Although that's a shortened version of his name, I understand. His name originally was Kabashinsky. Now, what happens if he goes by Kabashinsky, then he has to play nose tackle. You know, hey, Vito, Kabashinsky, I get in there in the middle. Now, it's Cab, he can be a nice tight end out the outside. I wonder if his new bride of a week knows that she's really Mrs. Vito Kabashinsky. So. Haddix got almost all ten back. And it'll be second down at that. Bill Courier, number 29. A lot of pressure on this young man. First round, bad choice of three year, years ago. And with Montgomery gone and this uh, new idea of the, of the two tight end offense, one, one running back, he's not had two great years so far. Well, I think he averaged like 2.6 or 2.7 per carry last year. And that's just not enough. If you're going to play in this league, even though you do a lot of short yardage and goal line, you have to get those numbers up in the fours to be a real NFL running back. Again. Nice run there. Picked up the first down. Those are two pretty good runs right there. Addicts did. He's getting a feeling here. Now here's why the Eagles wanted to go to two tight ends. To get a guy up on Lawrence Taylor. That time the tight end blocked down. Kevin Allen, the rookie tackle, came around, got Lawrence Taylor, and then Michael Haddix was in there behind him. They give him another look. They don't let Lawrence Taylor get up there on that open side and line up against the air. Eagle first down. They trail 14-0 with 4.34 to go first quarter. For an NFL Today report, let's go to Brent Musburger. Intimately, usually comes down the line. I love that guy. He's like, Porch, go, go, go. Porch, pull him. And then McMahon, pass it, pull him. That's a good one. Second down, eight. Getting very dark here in the middle line. anyway the thing is the fact that you're looking back then I guess it's okay I mean it used to be a year ago that would have been a penalty but now because the defender is looking back then that's incidental contact but 
I don't know that that wasn't tripping is what I was saying. Elvis Patterson is involved in this. Yeah, you see, he's right there. Now, he's looking. He's going for the ball. He just stepped on the back of his foot. That's okay. Yeah, there's nothing you can't. That's not a penalty. Third and eight. Leonard Marshall, George Martin, Andy Hedden. They had a meeting at his middle. Well, Leonard Marshall said yesterday, hey, watch me tomorrow. Keep the camera on me. Of course, he knew he was going against a rookie, too. Watch this. Number 72 is Kevin Allen. He's going against Allen here. But Allen blocked out, tried to get Taylor, couldn't get him. It was really Steve Kenny, the left guard, that was responsible for Leonard Marshall. Boy, that is getting thing. really dark. Mike Moran, as the wind picks up, the storm is moving in. Bill McConkie has had two great returns already. And he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. A 37-yard kick and 12 on the return. Recently acquired John Kimmel, number 54, made the tackle for Philadelphia, and they trailed by 14. Overhead, the clouds are boiling, and down below, the New York Giants are doing the same as the wind rips through the Meadowlands. 3-12 to go first quarter, and now the rain begins. They said possible thunderstorms. That's what, I mean, it's football season. There should be rain and stuff. The only problem is there's carpet down there, and it won't make any mud when it hits. <laughs> Look, there's some wind going with that stuff. There's some whipping stuff. First and 10, New York. They've scored on a manual touchdown catch and a Morris run, and they lead by 14. Manual in motion, Maurice Carthen. Elsewhere on this first day of the 1985 season of the National Football League, Tampa Bay has gone on top of Chicago now. Under new head coach Lehman Bennett, they're up by seven. Kansas City, a quick lead over New Orleans, 10 0. Pittsburgh leading Indianapolis in the first quarter by one touchdown. And Seattle over Cincinnati, identical 7 0 score. Second down, nine. George Adams, number one draft choice in motion wide right. Sims looks his way, now locks it out for Carthen in the 44. Takes a pretty good pop from Reggie Wilkes. 7 0 Atlanta over Detroit. Green Bay trailing New England by seven. And Miami leading Houston in the Astrodome by 10, first quarter score. San Francisco 7-0 over Minnesota. And that's all of the scores of the games in progress thus far. Third and nine, Sims. Bill Sims is three of five for 49 yards. Tony Galbraith comes in on third down, and George Adams is in the slot to the left side. That is a new formation. Byron Williams had it, dropped it. Should have kept it. I tell you, he should have kept it. That was a heck of a throw by Phil Sims. It looks like Byron Williams here doesn't think that Sims can get it in this hole because Byron Williams ends up being double covered. You see Roy Nell Young in the outside. There's another defender right there in the inside and a third defender. He probably thought, I won't get it with all this crowd. Sims zipped it in between three of them. And then uh, flags are down. And they'll replay the down. Byron Williams went to a concentration clinic in Dallas during the offseason because he's had that problem with dropping passes. Forgot his lessons on that play. Now, you love these, right? Well, yeah, this isn't bad. I'd rather have them talk about it than foul it up. They all get together and talk about, you know, what you see, what you have. This is what I have. Number 54. Okay. Fourth down. Sure, it's still fourth down, so that it'll still it, it puts the Giants and Lendetta fourth uh, five yards closer, but still out of field goal range for a healthy Ali Haji Sheik. Healthy anyone, heck, a healthy bazooka. <laughs> 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 keep doing this they're going to get the first down there are no flags they got back in time Cooper waves it off down 
yard at the death. Now that one looked like an encroachment to me. That would have given the Giants a first down. Then they wouldn't have had to worry about it. I don't know. It, you know, again, if they get in that neutral zone right there, they're all in there. It looked like there was some contact made, and they jumped back. I guess they were all back. Now they can jump in there if they don't make contact, and then it's legal if they get back. Heavens have opened up here in New Jersey. It is not raining in Flushing Meadow, the site of the U.S. Open men's singles final coming up after our ball game. But if this cloud heads that way, guys, duck over there. Gary Reasons, second-year man. If Bill Parcells was saying that he's one of the most improved guys in the thing, I'll tell you, he sure played it like that that time. Way you play linebacker, the way that guy did. If I'm Bill Parcells, I'm kind of happy. I've got 14 points on the board already. That's that's the thing. The one thing that that you know when this happens, the biggest thing is being able to keep the football drive. But watch Reasons here. Take on that block. Make that guy miss and wrap, wrap him up. That's the way he's supposed to pass. Jaworski on second and 13. The pressure got to him. We do have a flag down at the point of contact. This looks like a Wichita Falls, Texas afternoon. This looks like a car wash. Have you ever gone through a car wash when you stay in there? We yeah. hear a lot of foot, foot, foot. That's what Jaworski heard. I think he heard Lawrence Taylor Holding from his backside. Number 74 declined. Third down. Hey, Lawrence Taylor got him. He holds on the side Taylor was coming from. That was the second holding on 74, Leonard Mitchell, who plays right tackle. The Eagles gave up 60 quarterback sacks last year. It was one of their goals to improve that. They haven't so far, given the evidence we've seen. Well, they haven't given up. Jaworski. Mike Quick gets his first grab of 1985 as the final minute of the first quarter winds down. Look at Jaworski. It looked like he could have gotten hit in the uh, hit in the ribs there, or he's just trying to keep his hand dry. That's what he's doing. He's sticking that right hand in there. And if the jersey's wet, I don't know how much that'll help. He's trying to stick his hand underneath his shirt or something. Lightning is dancing around now. First and ten, Philadelphia. Eleven seconds to go in the quarter. They trail by 14. Incomplete for 35. That stops the clock with one second to go. Intended for Kenny Jackson. John, how difficult is it to concentrate in weather like this? Well, of course, that's what they're getting paid for. I, I don't, I don't think that that should be a problem. I don't think concentration. I think the biggest problem is what we're seeing right here with one gun towards you. One, keeping your hands dry, and two, keeping the football dry. Now, it's the official's responsibility to keep the football dry. See, the umpire holds it till the last second. He puts it down. Jaworski has to keep his own hands dry. Second and ten. One second to go in the quarter. It's a mess in the Meadowlands. As the thunder roars and the lightning flashes and the rain comes pelting down. We'll play three more, though. At Giant Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey, where a violent thunderstorm has disrupted things here. I'm Vern Lundquist, along with John Madden. The Giants on top, 14 zip. Philadelphia has a third down and five at their own 27-yard line. Out of the shotgun. This play. All the way to the New York 42 yard line. That's what the Eagles needed. You know, something to get them started. Watch, it's a shotgun. It's a bootleg. They fake the run to the left. Then Jaworski keeps it and goes to the right. The Giants were in their pass rush 
defense, their pass defense, they're expecting pass. Everyone's run off in their secondary with their men, and Jaworski just runs around there, has nothing between him and a long first down. He looked like Randall Cunningham, the uh, number two draft choice and backup quarterback. He was the leading rusher for the team in preseason. That was a designed run, however, and it gained 31 yards. Haddix finds more to bail, this time at the hands of Carl Banks. This is the thing, the Giants have always had strong defense against the run. Here's Carl Banks on the edge. See how he plays that tight end? He's too strong for him. That is a perfect job of playing the tight end. That was Vito Cap. Carl Banks took him, crack, you know, and just held him on the line, threw him off, made the tackle. That's the way you play outside linebacker. Second down and 10, Philadelphia. Second time they've been across the midfield strike, but they trail 14 up. With 14-14 to go in the ring. Overthrow. Intended for Haddock. Jaworski, two out of eight for only 24 yards. Larry Flowers just picked up this week after having been waived a week ago. One of the stars of the Giants special teams. Now third and eight. That's one of the other problems going from 49 to 45. You, you, know, you lose some of those special teams guys, but we see how important they are already, you know, with McConkie and the punt returns the Giants have had. I think I said third and eight. It's obviously third and ten. With a shotgun. Blitz look with a nine-man front for New York. Lawrence Taylor claims that Kevin Allen drew him offside. Well, I think Kevin Allen moved first, and I think he had to get to the outside to block Lawrence Taylor. See if Fred Wyatt concurs. Ball start, number 72. That's Third exactly down. what it was. He's on the outside. Watch him. He's the outside guy right there. See if I can circle him right here. Now, he knows he has to block him. And then he, so he's going to get a head start on it. Third down, 15. That's one way that you get in that stance and say, oh, there's Lawrence Taylor. I'll get an early start on the officials don't let you jump like that. It's a long way from the Indiana Hoosiers when you're looking across the line at Lawrence Taylor, where Kevin Allen played the last four years. Going deep. They are trying as best they can to keep the balls dry, and they have they send in a new ball on every down, right? Well, what happens here, we see it there, is the guy's a good guy. He's trying to keep it dry, but he has a wet towel over it. So all it's doing is getting more wet, and he's throwing it in. He's like, give me the dry one. Yeah, here it is. Whoa. Throw it in, and he throws one that's under the wet towel. Ron Baker limping off. And Mike Horan on the punt on fourth and 15 with 13.59 to go. And there's one of the stars of the game thus far, Phil McConkey. 37-yard punt return, a 12-yard punt return. And a good kick by Horan. But it does go into the end zone and it'll come out to the point. We're early in the second quarter in the rain at the Meadowlands, and the Giants lead 14 0. You know, of course, had to go five tough sets against the Swede yesterday in the heat and humidity of the afternoon. Yvonne Lundell will be better rested. Didn't have that much trouble against an injured Jimmy Connors last night, but that's coming up, and it is not raining there. Now, if that's not rainwater, those guys are making a heck of an attempt to stay sober. First and ten. Sims, Maurice Coffin, hit by Anthony Griggs behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. We will have a new offensive lineman for the Eagles, Ron Baker, number 63, whom you saw limp off, has injured his right ankle and will not be back. And he has been one of the steadiest performers in that offensive line. We'll probably end up with Ken Reeves playing there now, who Mary Campbell was telling us about last night. Had a good preseason. He's only a rookie, but he says he's going to be a real player for him someday. Second down and 10. Giants lead 14-0 with 13-10 to go in the half. Six incomplete. Lobbed it over the on-rushing defensive lineman and could not find Maurice Carthen. You know, one of the big things I think we're seeing here is players changing their shoes. 
And what happens is you have different shoes for everything now. And they have different shoes, of course, for grass and then for mud and then wet. And you have different shoes for artificial, dry artificial turf and wet artificial turf. So some of the players are going from their dry artificial turf shoes to their wet artificial turf shoes. If they can find them, because they didn't expect the deal to happen in the Giants one out of three on third down conversions. They need 10 yards. This time, the concentration clinic paid off. Byron Williams for a first down. Ray Ellis made the pop from behind. I tell you, as you watch Byron Williams here, I remember receivers always say, as you're going up and the ball's being thrown to you and there's a defender behind you as there is here, you know you're going to get hit anyway, so you may as well catch it. And it doesn't hurt just as much. Watch it. He got hit right in the middle of the back. Both feet in the air. Of course, he's in George Adams, number one draft choice from Kentucky. There's Rob Carpenter, bruised knee. They thought as uh, late as Thursday he'd be able to play, but they swelled up on him. I always have a rule that any time a guy's wearing a baseball cap and chewing bubble gum, he's not going to play. <laughs> Probably doesn't even have his hip pads on. Have any trouble enforcing that rule? Huh? Well, he's not playing. He looks like it's a day at the beach or something. Second down. Five. But he gets moved to the outside. Wes Hopkins, number 48, comes up and makes the hit. Like what Bill Parcell said about him, John, he's got a defensive personality. Well, you know, that's the thing that you look for is a, is a type of guy that does play like that on the offense. You know, they don't have to play, uh, you know, and be an offensive personality. They can. They want to get out there and attack. You don't want to attack too much. You want to get out of the way of those defensive guys. But I know that, you know, the defense, I mean, the guys that like it in the trenches and hit and pop and whap and don't do all the fancy stuff. Third and one. Carpenter. the change. He's to the 43. Don Hasselbeck just reacquired after Zeke Moat's injury helped lay the block. Look at this. Lehman Bennett's team off to a 14-point lead over Chicago in the second quarter. And New Orleans has gotten a field goal. They trail Kansas City by seven. St. Louis still holds on to its 7-0 lead over Cleveland. And Pittsburgh has increased its margin over Indianapolis. First down, 10, New York. They lead 14-0. 10, 40 to go in the first half. Sims gets by Greg Brown. Picks up three yards to the 41. Seattle's lead over Cincinnati, 14-7. Atlanta over Detroit, 14-7. And New England over Green Bay, 12-0. Miami still has a 10-0 edge over Houston. And San Francisco still leads by seven over Minnesota. Second and nine here. Where the Giants lead 14-0, they got a 23-yard touchdown toss. Sims to Lionel Manuel, and then an 11-yard run for Joe Morris after a 37-yard return from Phil McConkey. Adams to the 40. Reggie Wilkes made the tackle, and Bobby Johnson will bring the play in. If Vito Kapashinsky is a great name for a nose tackle, what kind of a name is Reggie Wilkes for a linebacker? Well, you don't. Uh, Reggie Wilkes is one of those guys who sneaked in there at linebacker. Sounds like a Jackie Gleason character. Coach, you, you hear the guy that, that their defense is asking the coach, it was Herman Edwards asking the coach, you want me to play off? He said no, so he's right up on the line of scrimmage. So, first down, Tony Galbraith. 10-year man from Missouri. Won three games for Parcells and the Giants last year in the utility role. This is the interesting thing that Bill Parcells was talking about. What? Here was Edwards who was talking about playing off. They said, no. So this receiver takes him deep. That takes two defenders. And now they can bring Galbraith out here into the area and hit him out there. You see what they're trying to do is watch this. Drive too deep. Now watch this area out here. See, there's no one out here, and that's where they hit ball break. First and ten Giants with a 14-0 lead. Flag 
flag is down at the 22-yard line, away from the ball. Coverage from Roynell Young on Lionel Manuel, and the crowd is beginning to filter back in as the rain is let up. Defensive holder. That'll be on the tight end. That guy throws it from deep there. He's watching the tight end, so that'll be the linebacker, defensive back, holding the tight end. Holding, number 51, first down. Reggie Wilkes. Yeah, he, Reggie Wilkes was lined up in the tight end, and he held him, trying to, trying to keep him from coming off the line clo uh, uh, clearly, closely, easily, cleanly. Any of the way. Any of the above. There it is, right there in the middle of the screen. You see 51? Grabbing the receiver coming off the bar. That was Mark Lavar on the tight end. It was the fourth-round draft choice from Notre Dame, starting in place of the injured Zeke Moat. This is another rookie, George Adams. 6'1", 225 running back. Clock shows 8.20 to go. It's 14-0 New York. Philadelphia already flagged six times, and the Giants have, uh, have not been penalized yet. They're asking, that's a good, you hear that sound, who made the call? That's the Eagles sideline asking, who called that? Who saw that? I said, I didn't do it. The field judge, 51 did. They don't protect each other, those officials, man. Been bothered by a hamstring for almost a month. Well, you know, it's not his kicking leg. It's not the hamstring on his kicking leg. It's his his plant foot, and that would be his left foot. You know, when you kick right-footed, it's the leg, the opposite foot that you have to, you know, jam into the carpet to come through. And he and he uh, pulled the hamstring on a kickoff, and the kickoffs bother him more than the uh, field goal. Third and two. Adams. Looks like he got it. See Bernard Wilson in there. Greg Brown. Some of those guys get down there in the bottom of the piles. There's always a lot of talking and stuff. You know, like, you bit me now, I didn't bite you. Yeah, you bit me now, I don't have any teeth. You say, who has teeth? So he looks for the guy who has teeth. He's the guy but I don't even have teeth. 42 to go in the first half. First and 10, Giants lead 14 -0. Adams with a nifty move to the outside. He's inside the 10. Byron Darby made the tackle. Adams with a little tap on the head after he gets up. I like these two backs, this Carthon and Adams. You know, they have a couple things they can, you know, they play from the eye formation here. Carthon gets a good block. You see it right, right there, 44? And that's the thing that gives Adams that little inside move he can make. And I like that. You know, two big guys, and uh, maybe that's what the Giants need. Not not long games where guys run 78 yards, but just pick up first downs. Great situation. Second and five. Adams again. Gets a good block from Carthen. And he's to the four-yard line. Tell you, you know, you talk about guys who will hit. Watch this Hopkins. Right? The, the thing's moving on me right here. He's probably one of the best hitters. Wes Hopkins is one of the best hitters in the league. Just watch how he plays. I mean, you talk about a nose for the ball. Look at that. He runs by white jerseys, green jerseys, his own guys. That guy always finds a way to get wherever the ball is. First and goal from the four. Hasselbeck in motion. Carson doesn't get a thing. Maurice Carthon just learned a lesson right there in that play. When you get down there near the goal line, don't stand straight up because there's a lot of things there to hit. I mean, they hit him right between those two fours. Watch that. I mean, he, uh, he has chin strapped and, and everything knocked out. Watch him. He's going in there straight up, and you give him a lot to hit. You got to get bent. Of course, the line has to do a little better job there, too. You got to get bent, get underneath, get behind those shoulder pads. Second and goal. Giants lead by 14. Hasselbeck goes back to the right. Play fake. Flag is down in the end zone. Incomplete. 
intended for Adams, and there was a flag thrown at the time of the snap. Well, we're going to hear it right here from referee Freddie Wyant. Delay, 12 men on the field. That happens, you know, that, that, that first regular season game, you get... The Eagles down there, they're, half of them are playing goal line Four defense. Men on the field, defense, second down. Someone else is playing in there, and you end up 12 guys. Let's watch them. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I count 13. <laughs> That's a whole bear, unless I count a one guy twice. I well, we can tell if the Baker's dozen defense. Here's a fumble. See if the play was whistled dead. No, it was not. Eagles have the ball. Ray Ellis comes up with it. There's the other safety that gets around there. Maybe that's the thing they needed. Put the 12 or 13 in there. Let them get a little, little, little rest. Let them get regrouped. Then you get 11 down there, and they play in there. Let's watch it. It's going to happen right here off the right side. The guy that caused that was Anthony Griggs, number 58, the linebacker. He got penetration, and he got in there before it got started. Back to play, first and ten, Eagle with the first turnover of the ball game. Jaworski with protection finds Spag Miller, and he's belted at the 15. Let's look at that fumble one more time from an end zone perspective. I tell you, the linebacker, Anthony Griggs, right here, doesn't get blocked. He hits the hole. He hits Adams right on the ball. Watch. His helmet goes right on the football. Let's see if we can stop it there. See Griggs now right there. See, his helmet went right on the ball and just popped it out. There's Anthony Griggs. That put the plug in a 16-play New York drive that had shoot nine minutes and 31 seconds off the clock. Still 14. Michael Haddock shakes the tackle and has a Philadelphia first down to 25. Terry Williams, number 23, made the stop. John, we talked about the fact that Haddock is in his third year. There's Elvis Patterson who's playing in place of Mark Haynes. How long do you give a back to prove himself? Three years, four or five? Yeah, I've always, I've always thought that really the great ones, you don't have to prove anything. I mean, you walk out on a field and you see a great one and you know it. You don't have to wait uh, five years for a Dickerson you know, or an O.J. Simpson and say, well, I wonder if you'll be one. Heck, they're leading the league in their second year. Tony Dorsett. First and ten. Blitz coming. Jaworski hit. Right at the time he let it go. And guess who it was? Lawrence Taylor. This is where Lawrence Taylor is so good. All the way, he's coming out, out here from the right side. But I tell you, he is so tough when he comes from that outside because they just can't get outside him. You see him, the outside guy coming all the way. They tried to get Haddocks to block him, but you can't go out and get a guy like that blocked. Now, he was working with the other linebacker, Andy Hedden, who was inside. One goes in, one goes out, then they switch it. And they give that right side some problems. Second down and ten. Watch out. That is the third quarterback sack. Leonard Marshall gets another one. He told us to isolate on him. He's having a heck of a game. I'll tell you, and he's going against rookie Kevin Allen. He's sure doing the job. Here he is here, right here, trying to get it against Allen. He just comes right around and gets Jaworski right there. Watch him. He starts in a four-point stance, starts to the outside, just keeps working right around Allen, doesn't make an inside move, and then just runs right around him and says, whew, that's what I want, that number seven guy. Leonard Marshall. Jaworski has been belted again. Right now, Jaworski's got to feel like a fire hydrant and all his friends are dogs. Shotgun, third and 19. It'll be fourth down. We'll probably not get another playoff before the two-minute warning. It's a lonely life at times. Even after 13 years in the league. 
Giants lead 14 zip. Double header weekend next Sunday on CBS Sports. We kick it off with the Dallas Detroit game, where some of you will see the Rams against Philadelphia. Cowboys, of course, undefeated in preseason. They were 4 0. They've been that way twice before. In 71, they went on to defeat Miami in Super Bowl VI. In 1966, they went 5 0 and ultimately lost to Green Bay in the championship game. And then the second half of the doubleheader, Pat Summerall rejoins John Madden in Green Bay as the Giants take on the Packers. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Mike Moran on the punt. He's kicked it four times already. And Phil McCarthy, who's had a superb day, waits for it for 37-yard line. kick with 16 on the return. Forming former Naval Lieutenant having a good afternoon. Coming up at halftime, Brad Irvin, Jack Youngblood with scores and highlights in the studio and a U.S. Open preview. Yvonne Lindell and John McEnroe. He visited with Youngblood last week, I think, John, out in Los Angeles. Or not in L.A., but you did visit with him. Well, in Dallas. Uh, yeah, he was down in Dallas and watching the game, and I, I think, you know, he had a bad back last year, and, and I think he just got healthy, and it felt so good to be healthy. He said, I don't want to play anymore. It feels good feeling good. First and ten, Sims. Got back to the line of scrimmage before Greg Brown. And Dwayne Morris, number 69, made the tackle. You know, we've seen a lot of defenses, uh, you know, Vern, over the years where they go from five defensive backs to six, and the Eagles use seven. Uh, I also would expect that somewhere in here they have eight on their roster that they will on this series, maybe on third down, end up using eight defensive backs. 115 to go in the half, 14 nothing Giants, got all 14 in the two first two series. Intercepted. Wes Hopkins. Fumble. Eagles still have it. Bernard Wilson. And Philadelphia gets it back with less than a minute to go. I'll tell you who really hustled on that play was Byron Williams of the Giants. He made both tackles. He made the hit that caused the fumble. Then he tackled the guy who recovered it. Timeout. 55 seconds to go in the first half. Eagles have the ball after the pass interception and the fumble at the 30-yard line. Inside the final two minutes, of course, a fumble could be recovered, but not advanced. And so the uh, spot of the ball is where Wes Hopkins was hit. Now Jaworski trying to settle down a shaky offensive line who's been victimized by this pass defense. Pass rush, particularly. And maybe the, the combination of the boat. Right. Sometimes he has to hold the ball longer for guys to get open, and then the pass protectors have to pass protect longer. Haven't mentioned Elvis Patterson's name much today, which means that perhaps he's playing well, and at least for the moment they don't miss the all-pro safety markings. Of course they do, but... Well, that's the fourth. They're well on their way to equaling the number of 60 a year ago. Well, that one here was George Martin. You know, he'd been having trouble coming from the other side. Oh, here's the previous play. We're talking about the defensive back. Look, here's what the Eagles were doing. There's three, four, five, six, seven. Now, now they try and come in here, and you see what happens when you get that. You get all those defensive backs in there, and it's tough to throw again. Jaworski to Michael Haddix. That should be enough for the first down at the 40-yard line. With 33 seconds to go in the first half. Jaworski, 5 of 13, but he has been sacked four times. Haddix has caught three of those passes. He may wish he's with his golf course right now. Jaworski, yeah, he, uh, he bought a golf course. He runs it as his wife uh, down there working the place. And... I think, I think that's a smart thing. I mean, whether it's buying a golf course or not is smart, I don't know about that. But what he's doing is he was telling us last night, you, know, you start thinking of doing something now that you can do the rest of your life. And I think that 
over the years, professional athletes have had problems with that. Not while they were professional athletes, not thinking of what they're going to do the rest of their life. And here's a guy who is not only thinking about it, has thought about it, but is starting the work of it. I asked him last night what kind of a handicap he carried in golf, and he just smiled at me, and I said, no, the real one. <laughs> we're about to fix him for every pro-am during the offseason. He carries an eight. I tell you, if he takes too many shots from that back side uh, by Leonard Marshall or the front side by George Martin, that handicap's going to go up to 16. Eagles have two timeouts left. Giants all three coming up at the half. Grant Err, Jack Youngblood, complete rundown of all the scores in his first regular season weekend of the 1985 season. First and ten. And it's uh, getting lighter. The clouds have moved south. Lawrence Taylor. All of that running. And finally the throw with Bill Currier making the tackle after a five-yard game on Mike Quick. Lawrence Taylor came in and jumped right over Michael Haddix, but I'll say this, Haddix stayed with him. Haddix jumped up and got him the second time, and Jaworski was able to get the pass off. To the 40-yard line, but that is the final play of the half. Greg Garrity acquired on waivers last year from Pittsburgh. Jaworski has taken a shellacking here in the first half of play. Sacked four times, hit three others. Did you notice though, Vern, there at the end, he didn't even look back at Lawrence Taylor. He just got up and walked off. Halftime at the Meadowlands. The Giants have looked good. They have a 14-0 lead over the Philadelphia Eagles. Alan Thunderstorm, midway through the first quarter, have come back, but we still don't have a full house back in here. As we get set for the second half, the Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles. These two teams, of course, will meet again in three weeks. There is a battered Ron Jaworski. Said he had had the best preseason camp ever. No effects from the leg he see, uh, broke at, toward the end of last season. But uh, he's going to be a little war-weary already. That's what I think is going to be important. You know, now to see the effects of uh, that uh, battering that he took in the in the first half. You know, he, he had four sacks against him, but that's only about half of it. There's a lot of times you get bumped and whapped and knocked down that doesn't count as a sack, doesn't go in any stat. But I tell you, he, pretty, he, he took a pretty good whipping that uh, first half, Ron Jaworski did. Ali Hodges-Sheik will kick off for the Giants, three men deep. Herman Hunter, Andre Waters, and Kevin Cooper for Philadelphia. This will be the exciting Herman Hunter. And he gets it back to the 29-yard line. Robbie Jones, number 51, made the tackle. Statistically, at the half, Giants have the edge in just about every category, including turnovers. I think the the other big one is that is that yards passing. We see that that's that uh, you know the Eagles only have 24 yards passing, and with a quarterback like a Ron Jaworski and receivers like the Eagles have, of course that's that's how you're going to move the ball. That's how you're going to win a game. You can't do it 24 yards and a half. Receiver is set to the right side. Contact at the 50, no flag down. There is a flag back at the line of scrimmage, however. Turnover ratio, Seattle, Denver, 49ers, Washington, Miami, all in the playoffs, all plus double digits. Well, you know, that's the thing. If you look at any Holding stat. Number 72. First down. Kevin Allen. I'll tell you, it's been a long day for a rookie playing his first regular season game, number one draft choice. But man, these, these, they give you a day's work here. You know, we were talking about that stat then. Well, I said, if the only ones that really make any sense and really tell you anything, or the most important, is that turnover then. All the top teams in that stat usually always seem to be in the playoffs. First down, 20. the ball game. He's out to the 22. That's a tough thing after after a penalty to, to go and run. You know, you have a, a bag and you say, well, first and 10, let's make some yards and get second and five. But after a penalty, you're first and 20. You know, whatever you gain, you're still going to be second and long when you run on first and 20. 
Jerome Sally playing in place of Jim Burt at the nose tackle spot for the New York Giants today. Second down and 17. Giants rotate their defensive backs. Jaworski back to throw in the face of a four-man rush. Here comes Taylor again. That's dropped by Perry Williams. And with that burner speed which he possesses, he might have gone for 30 or 40 after making the grab. And Perry Williams is probably saying to himself the same thing that Bill Parcells will say to him tomorrow. What'd you jump for? You didn't have to jump. The ball was waist high, and I'm sure he's thinking that. Again, we see Jaworski here get some pretty good protection here. He throws the ball a little high here, and then and then uh, uh, there's Williams, and he's jumping up, and the ball hit him just above the knees. He said, what'd I jump for? I don't know. And the coach is going to ask, what'd you jump for? He's going to say, I don't know tomorrow. Third down, 17. Four-man rush again. Taylor breaks through. Lights out. Flag is down. He is so tough coming, and we're going to see him right here coming from this side. He's so tough when he does that. He just takes off, and he does a lot of it with speed. That time they tried to have Hobie Hubie Oliver Number 72, him. declined fourth. Watch him. Hubie Oliver, he, he takes the inside on Hubie. 72 was Allen, Kevin Allen, getting his thing. He, he held Marshall, who didn't get there. No one held Taylor, who did get there. Mike Horan on the punt. Bill McConkey to return. Giants, barring America, will have great field position. High snap. Low kick. McConkey. Runs fairly fast for a former helicopter pilot in the Navy. Emulating the accomplishment of Roger Staubach, who served four years for the Navy after graduating from the Naval Academy and then made it in the NFL. Suspension. Another demonstration. Phil McConkey here. You know how a horse keeps running when a jockey falls off? I like that about a horse. I like this about a guy. You get knocked out of bounds. Boom, the ball goes out. You lose the ball. Keep running. Doesn't care. You don't need it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Looking good down that sideline. With the ball, without the ball. With the jockey, without the jockey. He's already averaging 20.5 yards per return. He was trying to strengthen that average. Here's Sims on first down 10. Maurice Cawthon was not expecting the ball. Two men had gone deep, and Cawthon looked around and said, whoa. I think that's one of those passes that you use against a zone defense, and Phil Sims was ready to throw the ball before Carthon was ready to catch the ball. Second and ten, Giants lead 14-0, 13-30 to go third quarter. They have enjoyed terrific field position most of the day. Joe Morris bolts over left tackle and is cut down as he reaches the 30-yard line by Anthony Griggs. It's been a ground-oriented attack. Morris has now run five times for 26 yards. Adams 31 yards so far. Garth in six carries. Well, they want to work on the run game, and they've done it. Well, they're doing that, and I think I think it's important. Uh, I'm sure that Bill Parcells was upset the last time not scoring. I'm sure it's important that they get this one now. Blitz. Sims. Boy, now Young climbed the ladder. It was intended for Lionel Manuel. And that, uh, that's a should have had. I'll tell you, Byron, Byron Darby really hit Phil Sims on that. Watch him. He's coming from the backside. or straight up the middle. And he hit him right on the knees as he was trying to step forward to throw the ball. Sheik is trying to make amends for a horrid season in 1984 after he had the brilliant year as a rookie. He was only 17 of 33 last year, and keep in mind he is kicking with a pulled hamstring in his plant leg, his left leg, from 30, 47 yards out. Half the distance went wide right. Marion Campbell. His team still in it, trailing by only 14. 
college football returns to CBS Sports next Saturday when the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame take on the Michigan Wolverines. Rivalry as old as the game itself. It started in 1887. Get a look at uh, Heisman Trophy candidate Alan Pinkett. It's the season premiere of college football next Saturday, 1.30 Eastern, here on CBS Sports. First down, 10, Philadelphia, trailing 14, zip. With 12.49 to go, third quarter. Spag all in motion. Here comes Leonard Marshall. Jaworski feels it. Makes the catch at the 50-yard line. John Spagnola, who really came on with a fervor last year with 65 catches. That's a gain of 22. I tell you, that's an interesting play. Watch Spagnola here. He's going to go all the way across in motion. Lawrence Taylor follows him in motion. They start up here. They get messed up here. Spagnola gets up and catches the ball. But watch all this stuff. They go. There goes Spagnola. There goes Taylor. Spagnola goes out. Taylor goes out with him. Spagnola goes up. Jaworski sees him and hits him right over Taylor. That's quite an adjustment. It's a patchwork Philadelphia offensive line. Tom Gillespie has taken Kevin Allen's spot on left tackle. This is Hubie Oliver gouging out about three yards to the 45-yard line. Harry Carson, number 53, made the tackle. You know, I think sometimes you get a guy like Kevin Allen, your number one draft choice, and, you know, do you keep him in there, and maybe that'll keep up his confidence, or do you just get him out, let him sit down on the bench as he is and rest and think about it, then maybe the next time you put him. It's a tough thing for Marion Campbell. We also have word there is no fracture for Ron Baker. He has a sprained right ankle, but will not be back today. So Ken Reeves is at the, the right side of the line in his spot. Here comes the rush. Jaworski with a nice quick pass. Incomplete at the 12-yard line. Intended for speedy Kenny Jackson out of Penn State. Last year's number one draft choice. I think that the way the type of pressure is Dwarfs can get, he has to throw those quick passes. And if you throw deep, just get it out there. Now that's a ball that has to be catch. I, I, obviously, Kenny Jackson is out there. and The ball is there. It just goes right through his hands. I'm surprised that they haven't done that more. Worked deep on that side on Elvis Patterson. Any guy is nicknamed Toast because he gets burned a lot. And I'd be looking for that guy all day. That's where Mark Haynes ordinarily would be. And he's holding out. His agent is Howard Schlusser. It was described by Bill Parcells to us as a standoff. Here's Hubie Oliver falling down behind the line. That's up. And uh, does manage to work it down to the 41 yard line. How'd you treat guys who held out of camp? Or did you ever get involved in that? Didn't have that many. You know, in the early and or most of the time that I, I coached, they didn't get paid that much money and they didn't have that much to hold out for. I remember one year Ben Davidson was holding out for like $75. Really? Yeah. Inflation has hit. Fourth down. Mike Horan. Gets it way up. But also into the end zone. Hang time for Horan of 4.8 seconds. It comes out to the 20. The Giants have got it back. We are back at the Meadowlands where the New York Giants continue to lead by 14 zip as the defensive unit gets a momentary respite. First down, the Giants have gone almost exclusively with the run. 12-3. Vermont Chris John Madden here in New York, or in New Jersey, with the Giants. Joe Morris. Gets by two, can't get by the third. And why not run it if you run like that? Well, of course, that's the best time to call plays. You know, if you can pick up seven or eight yards and end up in second and two, that's a great situation. Again, I talked about this before, but see the guard pull, tackle pull, halfback sweep. The Giants are going to go to more of this type of running, off tackle and outside, as opposed to that inside between the tackle. Mike Reichenbach, who is replacing Jerry Robinson, speaking to him, is on the bench with a sprained knee for the Eagles. That ought to be enough for the first down, or close to it. 
now the sun is coming out. Yeah, I was saying earlier why I think it was so important for the Giants to score on that last thing. Maybe not to win this game, but I think when you start, you have to establish something. Not that you're going to get two quick runs and then uh, fall down to nothing. I think you have to, when you get the chance, you have to do it. And uh, those types of things carry over. That's what you are. First and 10, New York. 14-0, they lead. 9.45 in the third quarter. Morris again. Ray Ellis helps jam him up at the 31. Giants scored in their first possession. 23-yard pass. Lionel Manuel made the catch. Then a 37-yard pump return by McConkey set up an 11-yard run by Morris. That's the only scoring. Tampa Bay still leading by 11 over Chicago. In Chicago, Kansas City running away from New Orleans now. St. Louis leading Cleveland 7-3. Pittsburgh having no difficulty with Indianapolis. And a good one, Seattle over Cincinnati by four. Detroit, Atlanta, and New England, Green Bay. The lead is 13 to nine, Sims to throw. Joe Bay, dropped it. With Ray Ellis draped over his back. Despite the fact the sun is out, of course, uh, if you did not join us at the kickoff, we had a violent thunderstorm here in the first quarter, and the field is sloppy and soppy. Well, one thing about the artificial turf, that it doesn't really get, if you don't have any dirt there to mix with the water when it gets there, then you don't have any much. You just have a wet carpet is what you have. You guys aren't even dirty. How can you have a rainstorm like that and no dirt? Unbelievable. Third and nine. Sam, secondary receiver. That would not have been enough for the first down of the catch we made. And Lionel Manuel was the man who had it slip through his hands. Phil Sims now is 5 out of 14 for 72 yards, so not having the kind of day he had to begin the season a year ago when he threw for 409. Now, Sean Lambetta, the rookie from Towson State. He said he was afraid because he played football in the Division II school, he wouldn't get a fair shot in the NFL. So he didn't wait for the draft or free agency. He signed right away with the USFL. On today's thinking, that's wrong. Another dandy kick. Evan Cooper. Carl Banks has him by the shoulder pads. And he's down at the 36-yard line. 48-yard kick for Lambetta, 17 on the return. Hang time of four seconds flat. We've got 8.45 to go third quarter. Giants still lead, but they can't put the Eagles away. Sean Lambetta, good news, bad news, John. Well, you know, one of the things a punter has to do is be able to catch the snap. The bad news was he dropped the snap, and the good news is he got a heck of a punt after dropping the snap. Now averaging 48.7 on three kicks. First down, 10 Eagles. They are still, it doesn't seem that way, but they are. Here's Jaworski. That catch is made. Now they're going to say no catch. Terry Kennard picks it up. Well, that's one that you have to watch. Again, and if the NFL did have the instant replay working now, that's the type of thing it would be because the rule is if he has both feet on the ground and fumbles the ball, then, then it, it's a fumble. That replay, here we go. Take a look at it. Let's just see if we can see it. If Spagnola catches the ball and then comes down and has both feet in the ground, which he has the ball in there, I don't know. If you're Art McNally, would you overrule it? No, I would I would probably say I didn't see it. Too late. <laughs> Jaworski flagged down on the far side of the field. Catch is made by Hubie Oliver if the play stands. Who said it was it ever easy? Motion call against the Would you like to see the NFL institute that that concept? That they used in preseason? I like the concept in preseason. And I would I don't... motion 75 and 64, not being set. I don't want the things, you know, you know, to get where everything is uh, electronic and that type of football and robots and that type of thing. But I do think if something can help officiating, it can help the game. And if that's a way that it works, I would like to see it done, yeah. Nine for 63 for the Eagles. Giants 
have not been penalized. The Giants were either awfully good today or awfully sneaky. <laughs> We told you that Tom Jaleski has replaced the number one draft pick, Kevin Allen, who had more than his hands full today. Two holding calls. Both Leonard Marshall and Lawrence Taylor have had their fun with him. Third down. That last penalty was declined. It's third and ten. is down in the offensive backfield. That's going to be against the Eagles and they'll bring it back. That's going to be holding. Someone was getting very close to Jaworski and went down. Well, I know that uh, Taylor took an inside move. Jaworski hit him in front of Jaworski. But someone held in the Eagle offensive backfield in that location. Marshall has just uh, pounded his way back to Jaworski today. Here's Fred Wyatt. Holding number 74. That's, that's another Leonard Marshall. I think that's I think that's Leonard Mitchell. Is Mitchell, that about three or four on him today? He's having a tough day over in that other side with George Martin. Meanwhile, watch Tom Jaleski. Well, yeah, Lawrence Taylor takes it inside. See, that's tough. You get hooked up like that. He's by him, and the only thing you can do is grab him. Jaleski grabbed him. I would have grabbed him, too. But they got Mitchell on the other side. Third and 20. Michael Haddix almost dropped it. It'll be fourth and 14. Easy to pinpoint the problems for the Eagles. The offensive line has been like a sieve. That's right, and they either been like a sieve and they knock Jaworski down, or Jaworski finally completes one to Spagnola for enough for a first down, and the offensive line's holding. So that's that's been their problem. There. Compounding the difficulty, they dribble the snap back. Around. As it out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Reminder that Dallas versus Detroit or the Rams versus Philadelphia will kick off next week's doubleheader on CBS. Cowboys, of course, undefeated in preseason, along with the Giants. And the last two times they have been undefeated in preseason, first they went to the Super Bowl in 1966. They lost to Green Bay in the championship game. That'll be the lead game. And the second game of the doubleheader, the Giants against the Green Bay Packers. John Madden and Pat Summerall will be there for that game. The feature on the NFL today next Sunday, Storm and Norman of the Eagles. New owner, Norm Prano. Who said, I'm not renegotiating contracts. I'm going to hold the cost down. And then, as you may have heard Irv Cross say in the pregame show, he excited the Eagles by promising 10000 bucks each if they make the playoffs. That may be an empty promise right now. It's a pretty good bet. <laughs> The other thing is, if the Giants didn't score the first two times they had the ball, this is kind of a boring game. We got a we got a zip zipper going here. I was hoping you'd say that, so I wouldn't have to. Well, they get the two going, then they kind of put it in the throttle deal here. Not much going on. Second and seven. Sends to Morris with Ray Ellis. The initial contact, but that will be enough for a first down to the 45. You know, another thing the Giants are doing more of, or going to do more of, is use their halfback. As we see Joe Morris here run a pattern, come in motion, come back out, come back in, catch a ball. They're going to use that halfback position, either Morris or George Adams. Morris a pass receiver this year. First and ten, Philadelphia, 6.15 to go third quarter. I mean, New York and the Giants try an off-tackle play on first down that doesn't pick up much. Greg Brown made the tackle. We talked about the Cowboys being undefeated in preseason. The NFC East was 18-3 and three in preseason play. You know, the other thing that I noticed about that, the Giants were the leading scoring team in the entire NFC. And you say, well, they had five games. It should be, but even discounting that first game, even with four... 
scoring is going to be down this year. I think I think the scoring is not going to be up. I think the defense has finally figured out all this formation and offensive passing stuff. Manual in motion on second down. Eight. Sims looks deep, goes deep. Lionel Manuel. First down for 32. Here comes Lionel Manuel. He's coming across. He's in motion. He makes a play off, and he makes a pretty good cut there. Did you see that? He planted with his right foot, jammed it back to the inside, and he got down just before the trouble got there. Now, the Giants have done a pretty good job today of protecting Phil Sims. They've given him time. That hasn't been their problem. First and ten. Maurice Corpin. To about the 30. It was a, an extraordinarily tight division in the NFC East a year ago. Look at the preseason records. St. Louis 2-2. Two and two. Everybody else had a winning record. And St. Louis could be the sleeper team in that division. I think, I don't know, I never get into this stuff, but to me it looks like the Redskins are the best of the bunch. But they've all done well. Look at them all. A lot of wins. Huh? The Giants will find out early. They play five division opponents their first seven games. The Eagles will find out even sooner. They play six out of seven in the NFC East. Sims, Byron Williams, tipped away incomplete. Roy L. Young did a fine job of closing after the pass had been thrown. And I'll tell you, he had to close because Byron Williams is one of the fastest guys in football. Watch him turn on the burners right there and zip. He has to slow up and wait a little. Had he been playing in Canada or some cornfield or some place where there's a lot of room, he would have beaten him by 20 yards. He just had to slow up for the end zone. <laughs> have you ever had a team play in a cornfield? Oh, yeah. You go deep by the, by the truck, by the trailer, over the harvester. Third and eight. Flag down. Tips almost picked off. Royal Young dives for it against whom the penalty is called. The Giants are going to be in shock if it's against them. Illegal motion, number 60. First penalty against New York. Well, and that's against Brad Benson, you know, the left tackle again. Sometimes, once they get up and they get set, those Illegal tackles... Illegal motion, number 60, decline. There's Brad Benson there. And they get set, they put that hand out. If they pick up the hand, that's illegal motion. Brad Benson has an unusual off-season avocation. He trains German Shepherds and Pit Bulls. Yeah, he trains dogs. In fact, I was talking, I got so many dogs, I'd like to get just one of them trained. So he may train one of my dogs. He's just protection training. Needs to train himself. Don't go in motion. Ali Hajashik, second time he's tried one from sub-47. And for the second time, he's wide to the right. the distance didn't have the direction Giants still can't put the Eagles away we're back at the Meadowlands Giants Stadium East Rutherford New Jersey I'm for Lundquist along with John Madden the Giants scored the first two times they had the ball they have had a handful of opportunities since but they still lead by only a 14 nothing count the Eagles come back to the line to worsen so far 10 out of 22 for 96 yards for his life. Michael Haddix. We mentioned Ernest Jackson, who has been with this team for about a week, acquired from the San Diego Chargers. Marion Campbell told us he might play some today, but it looks like they're going to get Haddix to the heavy work club. Well, you know, I think he was thinking it would be a warm day and he would like to get some offense going, and then you have to substitute. But when you just go in one, two, three, punt, no one needs a rest, so there's no reason to give guys a rest because they haven't done anything to get a rest or earn it. <laughs> Second and five. Janorski. Mike Quick. First down, Philadelphia at the 48. You know, they finally got Lawrence Taylor on a pass and it's illegal because they cut him outside and you can't do that to a pass rusher 
Watch how they do it. They let him come up, block him here, then bring the back in and chop him right here and cut him so that the quarterback gets time. Now, what, that's one way. See the tackle take him out? Now stop right there. Stop. You see, then they go for his leg and cut him, keep him here. Now Jaworski has time to throw the ball. So they finally figured out a way to get it done. Ernest Jackson is making his first appearance in an Eagle uniform. This is Jackson. He has now met Lawrence Taylor. I think I would have, you know, he would have said, you know, the good thing I'm in the game and the good thing I'm going to carry the ball, but doggone it, I got to get over there and try and get against Lawrence Taylor. And that's a tough block. He's playing outside. The tackle has to pull and try and, and hook him. They knock him out right right into the thing. That, that, that's a tough play. I mean, you can't run that play. I don't think that uh, Gillespie should be blamed, and I don't think Ernest Jackson should be blamed. NFL Films had him, Mike Taylor, that is, during the Jets preseason game for a highlight film. Steve Sable of NFL Films said, hearing him hit makes Rambo look like a cabbage patch doll. Here comes Taylor. Here comes Marshall. Jaworski does get rid of it. The pass is incomplete. the type of beating that we're talking about that Ron Jaworski has been taking today is it's not only the sacks he's taken, but even though when he does throw the ball, he's still getting knocked down. I'll tell you one thing I've always thought about Ron Jaworski is he, he does take punishment. I mean, there is a tough guy. Because, you know, these don't go. Watch watch Taylor come in here and watch Jaworski. I mean, both his feet lift up. He runs into Taylor hits him, knocks him into Marshall, boom, like a, a pinball Something. Aaron Campbell said Jaworski's one of the toughest guys he has ever seen. He's giving us an example of that today. Third and 13. 14 nothing. Eagles trail. Here comes Andy Hedden. It becomes a congregational gathering around the body of Ron Jaworski. That is the sixth sack today. They're really giving him trouble over here in this left side. You see that time Taylor fake coming, and now 54, Andy Hedden comes, and they don't get him blocked. Then after that, George Martin gets him, and the whole batch of guys are in there. Mike Moran is on the kick again. He's got to be the most tired guy in the, in the ballpark. Bill McConkey to return, almost blocked. Contact, no flag. McConkey from the 18th. That's the puniest return he's had today. 14-0 our score with 144 remaining in the third quarter. A reminder that the U.S. Open's men's singles final is coming up next on CBS Sports. Take a look at Major Everett. I'll tell you, 39, one of the best special teams guys in the game. He's going to get triple team. Look, they had three guys on him. Bill Parcell says this guy shouldn't be major. He ought to be colonel. We have, when we return to his side, we're going to block him with three guys. They blocked him, knocked him down, grabbed him, punched him, hit him. Look, they're still going. They're ready for the next play. Quick pop to Joe Morris. As we were saying, the U.S. Open Finals are coming up. John McEnroe against Yvonne Lendl. McEnroe had to go five sets in the heat yesterday afternoon to defeat the Swede. Jimmy Connors injured an ankle in warm-ups. Lendl kind of breezed through him, but Lendl has been in the finals three times in succession without winning. McEnroe against Lendl coming up next live, 4 o'clock Eastern time. Second down and five as we get toward the end of the third quarter. down. Wes Hopkins and Anthony Griggs make the stop. That's the old single wing off tackle power play. You just pull that off sides, get that whole thing. You know, in college they call it student body right, student body left. Watch that. Watch the left side pull. See the guard and the tackle, the counter. Here comes little Morris in between him, gets right behind Brad Benson, finds a little hole, picks up first down. Roynell Young 
see he's going to run that out and up again that he got the touchdown on. Started the out, went to the up, saw the ball thrown short, stopped. The ball starts working down his legs all the way down, and he finally got it underneath him somehow. And might have got a bounce off the turf. That's the end of the third quarter with a score. The New York Giants 14, Philadelphia nothing. We now pause for a while. Rains have gone away. Take a look at isolation of that previous play. Right there, you see Lionel Manuel didn't have that ball. Now Joe Morris to open the fourth quarter. That was a 32-yard gain. After we looked at that, it appeared that there was a trap involved. Well, you know, he made a heck of a play. He was running and out and up. He stopped. He came back. He bounced. He dribbled the ball all the way down his body. And then right at the end, he, he fumbled and the ball hit the ground. But he was in such a position that uh, the official couldn't see it or didn't see it that quickly. Of course, now it's an interesting thing. You know, had they had instant replay, I don't know if they would have waited that long to find the blown up picture that showed, in fact, it wasn't a complete pass. They would not, under the rules that were established for the preseason experiment, they had 20 seconds to make the decision, and they could only look at the first replay. Giants lead 14-0. Vern Lundquist and John Madden here at Giants Stadium, season opener. Next week, the Rams at Philadelphia, the Giants at Green Bay, Bill Parcells. Boy, was he nervous yesterday. Well, I think he's still a little... I don't know if he's nervous now. He's probably not, but I think he's a little upset. You know, that I got you got to get it going, keep it going, boom, you know, get it in there. And, uh, they've been going up and down, but they haven't been ringing the bell since the start of the deal. And uh, Tony Galbraith... And now that's a passing formation. Instead of passing, they pull the left guard, Billy Yard, let him kick out, and they run a draw play to Galbraith. You know, so the defense, they see him coming in. They say, 30's in, 30's in, watch the pass, pass. And they start back, hand him the delay of the draw, boom, whap, there. There's also an injured player at the end of the team. We'll check on the identity in a moment. First and goal, New York at the eight-yard line. The injured player was Wes Hopkins, but he uh, got up and trotted off by himself. He are the, here are the missed opportunities about which we spoke, John. And I think this is a big thing for him. I think it's important, again, maybe not in this game, but important in your development of your team. And when you get down there, you got to, boom, you got to knock it out. First and goal from the eight. Stripped. One L Young. because Lionel Manuel beat him early on and out, beat him on an out and up for a touchdown, got that call on him to put the Giants down in this position. It was really a fumble. I think, like, I think right, right now Young said, I've had enough of this stuff, man. Get get out of here. Get off from the sideline. Go to the back. I've had enough of that stuff. Must watch Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Second and goal from the eighth.
Bill Parcells. Well, he's feeling a little better now. You see that? Now he's telling Taylor, okay, keep the pressure on him now. Don't give up. Don't let up. Come on, Lamar. Lamar Lockman, the coach here, defensive coach. See, they say th those things on the thing. You know, when you get one, then you try and keep him fired up. That's the secret, huh? Keep him fired up. Tough Se paying so much money. 79 yards and eight plays. 353. The key play was the Lionel Manuel catch for 82. And the Giants lead 21-0. We've been talking throughout the second half about these undefeated preseasons. To give you an idea of how deceptive that can be, however, the last time the Giants were undefeated was in 1973. They went 6-0. Norm Sneed was the quarterback. Alex Webster was the coach. They won their first game against Houston, tied Philadelphia in week number two, then lost 10 of the next 11 to finish 2-11-1. Herman Hunter, deep to return for Philadelphia. You know, some of these people have come back. The crowd is filled in again. You remember, you, know, you said it left, it rained, they left, and then uh, they didn't come back for a while. I wonder where they went. semi-wet wave now. They went out in the parking lot and dried off. Practiced the wave. Oh. Would have been a real wave if they'd all been here. The three phoniest things in football are the wave, artificial turf, and a dome stadium. In that order. I'm about ready to retire, too. Herman Hunter. Nothing in our game this week. Next week, CBS doubleheader. Many of you will see Dallas versus Detroit. The Cowboys going up to one of those artificial indoor stadiums with artificial turf. Detroit is leading Atlanta 28-21 in the third quarter. And then the second half of the doubleheader, the Giants against the Green Bay Packers. And, of course, those of you in the Philadelphia viewing area will see the Rams in Philadelphia in the first game of the doubleheader next week. That's next week. Right now, it's 21-0. New York leads. Number seven. Well, that's Lawrence Taylor on that one. That's, that's funny. They, they tried to block him again, now with a back. Now, that is darn near impossible. Here's Lawrence Taylor. He's going to come here. The back is going to try and block him. He just does here. Boom. He goes right off and gets Jaworski. Watch him here. You see him come? Now watch. Here's Haddix right there. See, he's trying to get him. He needed help. He was trying to hook him. And uh, he just took him, threw him to the side, and sacked Jaworski. Lawrence Taylor, I found interesting, has a San Francisco 49er helmet in his locker. Got it from the Pro Bowl. He made a trade. Eric Wright gave it to him. Who? The sack pack, Taylor and Marshall. These fans here in New York, they know about defense. It's not only the offense that gets cheered. Here's Taylor here. Here's Marshall inside here. He's coming boom here. Taylor's coming here. They're going to all arrive about there at the same time. So he's coming to the inside. Taylor from the outside watching. Jaworski just looks out there now. He knows it's coming. He's anticipating. Third and 31. It's been like a barefoot stroll through the daisies for this giant defense. Oh, that's embarrassing. Everybody moved at the center. Campbell, you know, these things, when they start to get away from you like this, and, you know, they always talk about you know, how do you start a team, and I've always said offensive Ball line. start, offense. You know, not quarterback, not the wide receivers, not the defensive, you start with, all, because if you don't have those guys, if they can't block, everything else you do is academic, or you can't do anything else. It is a patchwork offensive line now. Kevin Allen's on the bench. Ron Baker's on the bench. Zaleski is in there. Ken Reeves is in there. Leonard Mitchell. Mark Denner, the center. And Zaleski finally has the snap. 
fires it out to Spagnola, bounces off a tackle, has a first down, or no, he uh, does not, he's short of the first down for 29. Now, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York for an NFL update. I'll tell you, it's tough to repeat because you never sneak up on anyone. Everyone you play, it's like a Super Bowl to them. This is a Minnesota Vikings Super Bowl today. Mike Horan is on the kick again. McConkey. Special teams work by the Eagles. Jerry Theory was down there. A 36-yard punt that time for Horan and nothing on the returns. 10-41 remaining in the ball game. Looks like it's going to go the Giants' way. From high overhead, Giant Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. That is the view from the Goodyear blimp. Just uh, left its base in Teterboro, New Jersey. And it is heading over toward Flushing Meadow at the National Tennis Center where the finals of the U.S. men's singles are coming up after our ball game, Lendl and McEnroe. Joe Morris. For a couple. You know, I wouldn't be surprised, Vern, if we saw Randall Cunningham, the uh, Eagles rookie quarterback, come in the next time the Eagles get the ball. I think that Dworsky, and I don't think it's Jaworski's fault, but I, I think he's taking a beating today and that you don't need much more of that. I think they're going to take the young guy in there and say, well, you go in there and see if you can run around a little, throw some, maybe get something going, maybe change the pace a little is all you need. I bet he'll run looking at that pass rush. Uh, I think, you know, maybe just give the pass rush a different look. Sims to Morris, he's been a busy young man today. Chased by... Herman Edwards and finally driven out of bounds by Wes Hopkins. I'll tell you, that Wes Hopkins, he does give a look. I don't know. One thing, you have to hit him while they're in bounds, and two, you can't hit him in the head. But that was a, a vicious shot over here on this sideline that uh, little Joe Morris took. Hopkins comes from, the, uh, from his safety position, and watch him come flying over here. He is zeroed in on him. That, that wasn't a, a whack to the head on that one. But that's what Wes Hopkins, I mean, Wes Hopkins is a, is a safety. He's probably one of the hardest hitting safeties in the league. And when you get close to that sideline, sometimes you get him on one side and sometimes you get him on the other side. But he's usually going to get you. No flag. Morris walking off by himself. Wes Hopkins walk-on at Southern Methodist University six years ago from Birmingham, Alabama, became an All-American number two draft choice. Bill Parcells said yesterday he thinks he's one of the best in this conference at his position. First and ten, George Adams. Our score 21-0 with 9.42 to go in the ball game. Byron Darby made the stop there. Elsewhere in the NFL, Chicago has fought back and taken a three-point lead over Tampa Bay. Kansas City extending their lead over New Orleans. I get to do the Saints next week. May not be fun. St. Louis over Cleveland, 16-3. And Pittsburgh folding up Indianapolis, 38-3. Second down and seven. 21 nothing to score. 9-15 to go. third and about five. Seattle over Cincinnati in the fourth quarter by four. Detroit leading Atlanta 28-21 in the fourth quarter. New England now leading Green Bay 19-6 up in Foxborough this afternoon. And Houston over Miami. How about that? I'll tell you, that is, that is one of them, isn't it? Dad? That's what proves something that maybe if you have your quarterback there, you're going to beat the guy that didn't have their quarterback there most of the time. Cunningham has donned his helmet. It's third down and five. 21 nothing to go. Uh, 21 nothing. John's lead with 8.29 to go. Sims, deep out, tipped away by Roynell Young. They've given him a working over today. This time it was Byron Williams and Roynell responded to the challenge. 
That was a pretty good throw there by Sims, and it was good defense by Young. You see him, he's starting back, his back pedal sees the ball. He's going to get that hand in there just about the time the ball arrived. Although I think Byron Williams let it get too close to his body. The ball should never hit you in the shoulder pads, never. Sean Landetta is on the punt. Evan Cooper waits for it at the 10. to run to the 28 yard line and we will indeed see a new quarterback Randall Cunningham has taken Ron Jaworski's place 8-12 to go in the ball game after that 35 yard punt and 15 yard return Randall Cunningham older brother Sam played New England for a while second round draft choice out of Nevada Las Vegas and the leading ground gainer for Philadelphia in preseason because he goes back and looks at one receiver and if that receiver is covered, he's running. This time, the receiver was open, but he couldn't find Mike Quick. In preseason, when he did throw the ball, he threw it 28 times for 175 yards. I'll tell you, he's a good quarterback, and he's a good a good prospect. And I also think, along with all these goods, that this is a good time to get him in there because the giant pass rush has been so good that nothing's been good. And just a change of pace sometimes gives you a different uh, feeling for that offensive line. Helps him out a little. Giants have sacked the Eagle quarterback eight times already. That one is tipped away by Byron Hunt, number 57, intended for Spagnola. what it looks from behind the quarterback. See, here's what he's saying. He's looking, looking, trying to find the guy in the middle. Sees him, just zip right over that. You see, the thing is, it's, you know, easy to throw and to hit a guy, but to have to see over all those guys in front of you and still do it, that's what separates the guy. Third and ten. Eight sacks that we mentioned. The record number of sacks given up by an Eagle team is 11. Number 86, a 24-yard gain. That's what a strong-arm guy can do, Vern, like this, like Randall Cunningham. He really didn't step into this one. He just threw that with all his arm. He found Garrity here against his own defense. That was a short and a deep guy, and Cunningham hit him right between the zone of the short and the deep guy. But he didn't even step up to do that. He just put his arm. Reminds me of Terry Bradshaw when he first started. 7.25 to go in the ball game. First and 10 Eagles. Flag is down. Oh, did he take a pop? Lawrence Taylor just leveled Randall Cunningham. You know what happened on that one? He was trying to throw out here on this side. I think it was to Mike Quick. But Mike Quick stepped out of bounds, and he can't be a receiver anymore. Now watch, he's trying to tell him, keep going, keep going. Now watch Lawrence Taylor put the lick on him just as he tries to throw it. But see what happened is Quick is over here. Now watch here, Quick will go out of bounds. You see here, he steps out of bounds Number right 81. there. Now he can't I come in and be tackle. a receiver again. Doesn't make any difference if he steps or if he's pushed out. You can't go out and come back in and catch the ball. There was also a five-yard penalty while all of that was going on against Philadelphia. And it'll be first down and 15. World Philadelphia, huh? Woo, this, is gonna, this is a bad day, an opener or not. Bad they're, they're getting close to a record number of punts also. First down, 15. Another flag is down. Another quarterback is down. That's nine. Jerome Sally gets this scalp. This one could be one against the Giants. Yeah, it's defensive holding down here. It'll be against the defensive back. Finally, you know, the Giants have only had, what, uh, one penalty? All That's the first time they caught him? <laughs> holding number 34. 
<laughs> first down. That's a slight degree of cynicism. Yeah, we know better than that. I mean, that's, that's the first time they were caught. But here it is, 34 is Elvis Patterson. He's the corner out here. Oh, yeah. I mean, heck, he grabs him there once, grabs him by the back, too. I bet there's even more after that. First down and 10 again. 7.07 to go on the ball game. 21 nothing Philadelphia leads. I mean, uh, New York leads, beg your pardon. 14-nothing lead early. Led by that amount of the half. Got one a moment ago to me. Screen pass. Another flag is down. This is evolving into chaos. Now, I mean, it's been chaos for a little while here because when you can't get the defensive... Uh, line and linebackers block to pass it's going to be a, a lot of chaos holding defense defense you know now the, the correct, number 54 first down it was the giants fans who caused us to mispronounce that word the correct pronunciation is defense right but when they used to sit here and yell at sam huff defense defense all of a sudden we start saying holding defense that's right and you know even before they had that so all you need is is get them guys you know you don't need any words for them if you got the real thing out there you don't have to use words you just say like sick them get them and all your get them guys go in there and sick them well that was holding on the defense not on the defense you don't say defense Weekend of the regular season, Oakland and the Yankees uh, in football, and baseball continues. Oakland and the Yankees scoreless in the first. Toronto, Minnesota, 2-2 in the sixth. Toronto comes in to visit the Yankees later on this week. At Yankee Stadium, New York went in today, trailing by a game and a half. Second down, five. 6.55 to go. Ron Johnson has come in as a wide receiver now. Who's new to this Philadelphia team? He is wide at the top of your screen. Second and six. 21 0 Giants lead. Cunningham intercepted. Picked off by New York. Bill Courier. I think that was a double coverage inside out. Courier makes the interception, but this is what all young quarterbacks will always have a problem with. They watch the guy they're throwing to. Watch Cunningham. He looks, he looks, he looks, he steps, he throws. Courier was just sitting right there. It was a double coverage, 43 Kennard outside, Courier inside. Lawrence Taylor on the bench. His offensive teammates are on the field, first down and 10. for Joe Morris. Now let's go to Brent Musburger in New York for this NFL update. But that's a dandy. Much closer game than we've seen here. New York Giants leading 21-0 and they've got the ball with a second down and five. 6-13 to go in the game. Placing one of the three holdouts for the Eagles, Dennis Harrison, Joel Williams, Jerry Robinson. Interesting, all three of those controversial situations involve defensive players, and that really hasn't been Philadelphia's problem. Today. I don't think that that's their problem, or it could be part of their problem, but their big problem, uh, of course, is generally the offense, and uh, specifically the offensive line, and there's no one holding out out of that group. Greg Brown, 98. Third down and five. 21 nothing, 5.20 to go. George Adams is nailed at the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down. Lawrence Taylor. I think Lawrence Taylor is just a little tired there. He's, he's changed his shoes. That's an old thing you do that, you know, when you get tired, you just take your shoe off and you change it. So it gives you time to work on something there. But he's been chasing that quarterback 
So they, he's just getting tight. He may have worn out a pair of shoes. I think he's putting on a new a new kind there to chase another guy. To get retreads on those yeah, things. Yeah, he had his Jaworski shoes on, and now he's putting on his uh, Cunningham, Cunningham shoes. Shoe. Evan Cooper back to return the punt of Sean Lambetta. Lawrence Taylor has two and a half sacks today. He's taking up golf. I have a feeling he hits it a long way. I don't know. I don't, you know, the thing is, he can't play golf because, see, linebacker, you do what, Lawrence, right? You always keep your head up, eyes open. Yeah, like that. Head, see how he puts his head up? In golf, they tell you, keep your head down. How's that guy? Look, look, look at him, his head up. You don't put your head, head down. Linebacker, keep your head up. See, feel, move, move, move. Then he's going to go, and some golf guy's going to say, hey, keep your head down. This for par. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> this for par. Well, we got we got a we got a great matchup. He could play Yvonne Lendl. Lendl's a golf freak. Lendl is going to play McEnroe today, and he and Taylor will play 18 tomorrow. Touchback for Landetta, who's had a fine debut in a New York Giant uniform. A lot of pressure on the kid. He replaced Dave Jennings, who went over to the Jets. A 53-yard kick. He's got to be pleased. Sheik said yesterday he doesn't kick them a long way, but they stay up there. Well, today he's doing both. That's what they call hang time. He even looks, he even smiles. How the heck, you know, he has to be a spitter. You see that uh, face mask there, the single bar? It was all dirty in the inside. The only way you can get dirty on the inside in a face mask is spitting stuff out. See, if you're a real player, then it gets dirty from the outside in. If you're a kicker who spits, you see that? Look. It's dirty on the inside, just from spitting. Nah, he swallowed that down. Randall Cunningham. Almost had it at the 45. Jim Bird has come in at nose tackle. I'm sure that Bill Parcells finally gave in to him. Bill Bird, uh, I mean, Jim Bird had a, a bad neck early, and then he came back Monday, injured his back weightlifting. I'm sure he didn't start there. I'm sure the whole game he's been over there on Bill Parcells. Hey, let me in, coach. Let me just get a feel. Let me have this. Let me have this. Because they really don't need him now. There's only four minutes left. They're ahead 21 to nothing. And I think he probably finally wore Coach Parcells down. He says, I right, go ahead, get on in there and be quiet. Second down and ten. Stay with us. We've got an update coming that you will really be interested in. A great moment in sports history coming up shortly. Here's Cunningham. That's incomplete. Now, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. That gives me chills just watching. Here's a bomb. You know, I love Pete Rose, the way he put it in perspective. He says, no, catching Cobb is easy. All you got to do is get 200 hits for 20 years and then 180 more. You know, and it's not only, it's not as though that's all he did was just get up there and hit and stuff. But, I mean, the way he played the game, the way he attacked things, the way he ran the bases, he slid, he hustled, he did he did everything right the way the game's supposed to be played. Where would he have played on a football team? He probably would have been, he would have been a defensive back, a combination of Hopkins and Taylor. <laughs> this is the 11th Philadelphia kick, and it's a great one by Horan. Karki. Flag is down. Yubi Oliver makes the tackle. Most punts in a game for the Eagles. Adrian Burke in 1952-12. Eagles might try that today. This one will be against the Giants. One of those illegal blocks uh, from behind that we get on the kicking thing. Although we haven't had much of that today, but that's always a good Illegal one. Illegal block in the back. Number 54. First down. That's always the leader in the lead. I mean, before it's over, that one, that illegal block uh, on the kick will, will lead all penalties. Coming up at the conclusion of our game, we'll go back to New York for the NFL today. 
And then next week, we've got the doubleheader, Dallas versus Detroit, or the Rams versus Philadelphia. It begins at 12.30 Eastern time, followed by the Giants and the Green Bay Packers. Now, there's a real football field. I think that Green Bay Packers field is the best field in the football game. Yeah, George has I'll tell you something interesting. Remember the... Jeff Rutledge has come in as quarterback now for the Giants, and Phil Simms will get a chance. Boy, he had a great preseason. Terrific preseason. I tell you, he has a smile on his face. He's a loosey guy. You know, they say that in the Canton game, he was there on the sideline. Someone had put rocks in his helmet, and the coach told him to go in, and uh, there was an injury, and he had to dump all the rocks out of his helmet, put his helmet on, and on the first play, he threw a touchdown pass, came running up field. I said, ah, that's easy. Second down and eight with 3.03 to go in the ball game, and the Giants are really on the top 21 set. George Adams with Maurice Carson, Carthen, and Friends. Heading around the right side, short of the first down. Bill Sims for the day. 8 of 21, 133. Not the kind of day he'll remember, but he was spending most of the afternoon handing off. Well, and he had, a, you know, that some penalties and some stuff called back and, you know, some drops on him and stuff. I think that his day wasn't bad. I think the thing that they'll be concerned with more about their offense is that they got that early lead and then they just kind of settled down into mediocrity instead of keeping it going. Third down and three. Satisfied New York Giant bench. Well, that's Two's a satisfied deal. defense. Those are the guys that are satisfied. I mean, they there's Andy Head in there and all the guys. They put pressure on that guy. I mean, that, that quarterback, whew, long day, brutal. I'll tell you something interesting. You were talking about the field in Green Bay. You remember the Ice Bowl game, 67, the Cowboys losing to Green Bay 21-17. That is the last time Dallas has ever played in Green Bay, Wisconsin. It's been 18 years. The Giants are going there next week, and they'll go there 1-0. Back at Giant Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey, for the final two minutes. Vern Lundquist along with John Madden. Eric Carson just relaxing and exchanging ways with the fans. Had the kind of day the defensive unit has had. You can do that. Well, Harry was looking the wrong way. He's supposed to be looking out in the field. Harry got spun around there. He's looking out in the stands. Jeff Rutledge, the quarterback on the three. New nose guard from Philadelphia. Three the pound Joe Gray. And he'll get to see action for one more play because Maurice Carthen has picked up a first down. Tom Struthers makes the tackle. Joe Drake is a, a rookie from Arizona at one point. Weighed 330, checked in at 300. He's now playing at 299. Well, he's still, I'll bet you that he's still over 300 right now. As he stands in that huddle now, that body is over a 300-pound body. But that guy up in Chicago, they call the refrigerator, has a beat but 30 or 40, so he doesn't have to take it. Well, I can't even run her up on him. He ought to be called Icebox. <laughs> for a couple of yards. Ken Clark will get a rest. And uh, Joe Drake is in there now. Time winding down. We've got less than a minute to play. Philadelphia at home against the Rams next week. They've got six of their first seven games against NFC Eastern Division opponents. They started out the season last year one and four. They won five, five and one to wind it up. And Marion Campbell was encouraged by that. But he won't be by what's happened today. And the Giants are going to get a nice hand now as they break the huddle. As they did a year ago, they will be 1-0, and they are trying to become the first New York team since 62 and 63 to have back-to-back -back winning seasons. Carthen. Wes Hopkins with the tackle. This is what happens the first game, the opener, when the coach wins it. That's Harry Carson. He says, Coach, you've been hot all day. Let's get cooled off. It's over now. That's the second time he's gotten wet today. The rain shower did him in in the first quarter. I'm sure he doesn't mind. Bill Parcells looking for Marion Campbell. The Giants' defensive unit looked awesome. But one's not sure how good an offensive team they were matched up against. 